Seems everyone offering an app nowadays provides free credit monitoring. But how do I know which is the best one? I mean, there's FICO, which has a whole bunch of models. Then there are others like Vantage Score, which also has its own models. How do I know which to believe when I see my credit score? Should I be paying for this if I want real information? First, don't confuse credit monitoring with credit scores. Just because someone is providing a credit score, that doesn't mean they're also watching over your credit accounts for you. Let me show you the two main ones that I use, along with a few other helpful tools to maintain my credit history. I'm Cap, and welcome to Screaming Lincoln's Consumer Credit Series. Never pay for credit information. It's yours. For those starting out and have no history, the most important step is your identity. Get it right and keep it consistent. A few examples. If you apply for a job, fill out a rental agreement for a home, open a checking account, file taxes, get your driver's license, apply for any type of insurance, or even sign up for the loyalty program at your local grocery store, make sure to use your proper name. That information is uploaded to various consumer databases which provide the starting point in building a credit profile. OptOutPreScreen.com is a great place to start if you have no credit history. The site is a joint venture among the three credit bureaus along with consumer reporting agency Anovis. It's a free gateway to establishing a credit identity. Don't be the person who fills out forms using their nickname because unless it's used across all forms of identity, it will not be consistent. This inconsistency can be a reason for denial when applying for credit later on because some credit algorithms merely scrape data from different sources. When information from these sources are misaligned, then a denial can be automatically generated despite being a worthy credit candidate. Assuming the identity part is done correctly, the next step is to get at least one credit account reporting. I have a video going over what is still the easiest way to send a non-existent score to well above 700, which is done by becoming an authorized user on someone else's card or piggybacking. One other easy option for those with no one to piggyback onto is to sign up for a credit builder loan. I have a video for credit builder loans and what to look for when signing up for one to get a credit history started. If you have maintained a consistent identity and have some credit accounts reporting, then the next step is getting information from all three consumer credit reporting agencies. For those consumers who have started their credit journey already, the two main credit services I use, which provide both a credit score and credit monitoring, are Experian and Credit Karma. Keep in mind that Credit Sesame can be used instead of Credit Karma, but signing up for all three is not recommended because too many companies are having their data compromised. Having less of your information out there is usually better. The reason for two is that by going with either Credit Karma or Credit Sesame, then Equifax and TransUnion are covered. That leaves Experian, which also provides its own monitoring and score through their app. With just two apps, all three major consumer credit reporting agencies are covered, and even a score is provided for each. That's great, but some of my credit cards already provide a free score. Like Chase gives me a score using this credit journey thing, which apparently uses Vantage Score 3.0. Are they worthless? When it comes to scores, the system gets really nuanced because credit apps that provide credit scores usually use a different scoring model than what lenders use when they run a credit check. I won't get into the specifics of how different models like FICO can vary from another model like Vantage Score, but we'll have a separate video going over their differences. The main concern when viewing a credit history across different platforms is consistency, not just with identity, but with the credit accounts within the history. Keep in mind, not all lenders report to all three bureaus. 
errors can also occur. Seeing huge differences in scores is a potential red flag that incorrect information may appear in a bureau's database concerning your credit history. Ideally, you'll want to see the same number and names of credit accounts appearing across all three bureaus. But again, remember, some lenders only report to just one or two bureaus, so discrepancies may be unavoidable. Once you have the information from all three bureaus from the two apps mentioned earlier, check in on each app at least once a month. This is a great starting point for keeping up with your credit history. As you progress, more credit accounts will be opened. If I were starting over, I'd get as many revolving accounts, or credit cards, appearing in my history as soon as possible to establish a lengthy history. Plenty of smaller lenders, like community banks and credit unions, continue to provide credit to consumers looking to establish their credit history. Don't expect huge sign-up bonus offers or to get 2% cash back on spending as a reward for these cards early on in a credit journey. These mediocre cards are still great because they pad the age of accounts factor of a credit score. I have a video that goes over age of accounts with more information on how to improve this factor of a credit score. I even mention how to keep these mediocre cards active and reporting for years in a credit history with an effective credit and payment activity scheme. See my other video on payment history for information on how to easily keep all credit cards, including mediocre ones, active that would otherwise go unused every month. Eventually, more lenders will present more enticing offers. The Nuance credit scoring system provided for free from Credit Karma and Credit Sesame can be more aligned with these other lenders' scoring models. Many card issuers now provide free credit scores, so it will be common to have lots of scores from different lenders. Here's an extensive but still incomplete list of major lenders that provide free scores, which bureau they use, and which scoring model they use to generate the score. The free scoring system provided by lenders isn't perfect because, as an example, getting information from Equifax using the classic FICO model is near impossible. The score and scoring model isn't as important as knowing what must be done to maintain a great score to begin with. The score tends to take care of itself if you know how to navigate the various factors that affect the score the most, like credit utilization and payment history. The real value of a free credit service provider is in the monitoring, not so much with the scores. Allowing alerts to come in on the two apps mentioned earlier is a great way to secure your credit file and prevent identity theft. I recently got alerts from Experian and Credit Karma for a couple credit card applications that were submitted with my information. Everything matched except the address for the recent applications, which I didn't recognize. After a few messages with the credit bureaus and the lenders that received my falsified applications, my credit history was frozen with an identity theft alert requiring all lenders to contact me before opening any credit account in my name. Having peace of mind is important when it comes to your credit information. Sounds like credit scores don't mean much if you know what you're doing. I've seen your other videos which were helpful I guess the important part is to keep an eye on my credit through a good monitoring service like the two you mentioned earlier. I'm thinking about what you said about more lenders giving free scores. I assume that means at some point I would get the exact same score from different lenders if they were using the same scoring model and bureau, right? It's very possible considering most lenders provide scores using some form of FICO or Vantage score. I'll often see the exact same score across different lender scores each month. Many lenders and free credit service providers will alert you when your score has changed as well. In summary, get your identity established first. Next, get some credit accounts in your history under your established identity. Then repeat the process as much as you can 
provided the terms of the accounts you're opening don't come with unwanted fees for as long as the account remains open. Sign up for Experian and Credit Karma or Credit Sesame to keep tabs on your credit profile from the start. This way, you'll always be aware of what's going on. So what's going on with your credit file? If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments anytime. What are you waiting for? Hit it, Steve.